Hi, I'm Will, and this is my show, Not the Vlog. I was going to call it a 25 pound bag of dicks, but that would leave out everyone in the world who lives on the metric system. Today on Not the Vlog, I want to talk about some Halloween themed board games, RPGs, and card games. It is an appropriate time of year to play these games that are scary and weird and falling off the wall behind me because tape sucks. What? My friend Warren Ellis says that Halloween is kind of like goth Christmas, and I have to agree with him. This is the best holiday of the year because one, you get to dress up, which I guess for all you cosplayers isn't a very big deal, but you know, for me it is. And uh, you get to eat lots of Halloween candy, which, isn't that big of a deal to me because I don't really like candy. So today we're going to talk about horror themed games. We're going to start out with some of the RPG in a box style tabletop games that we all love. So let's start with a couple of games that we've already seen uh, so far on tabletop. There is Betrayal at House on the Hill, which is probably the canonical role playing game in a box. For uh, every time you play it, it is different and uh, it starts out cooperative but lends its self-competitive. Now, I had asked some people on the internet, have you heard of the internet? It's great, you should get it. I asked some people on the internet uh, what their favorite horror-themed games were, and a lot of people said Betrayal at House on the Hill. And one of the people who reads my blog, and I wish I could remember this person's name, we're just gonna call him or her uh, Horseface. We're gonna call him Horseface. Uh, and he's represented here by this action figure that my sister sent me. Check it out. Boing. They said that the way that they like to play Betrayal at House on the Hill is in a three-story house with a basement, and they actually move through the house. They LARP Betrayal at House on the Hill with no cell phones, plus scary music, plus only candles for light. To me, it sounds like a long way to go, but it could be a really, really good time to bring a game like that to life. Uh, so, Betrayal at House on the Hill, a great, uh, scary board game, especially appropriate this time of year. The second RPG in a box that we're going to talk about is The Last Night on Earth. We played Last Night on Earth last season. That's what this wonderful piece of artwork is from. Look, dude who gave me this at Comic Con, if you're watching this, please send me an email so that I can properly credit and thank you because it's super duper amazing and I love it. I don't know why I was going to say trooper amazing. It's trooper amazing. You know why? I'll tell you why. Because I was thinking Super Trooper, one of the great ABBA songs. That's scary. But Last Night on Earth is fantastic. It's a scenario-based, cooperative, uh, competitive game where one side is the zombies, one side is the survivors, and uh, you move through a B-zombie horror movie. Um, or if you're Felicia, you make the most useless fucking character in the world, Dr. Hannah, and he sits in his office and he jerks off through the hole in his rotting hand because he doesn't want to go out and eat any brains because God forbid a team I'm on wins the game. Thanks for nothing, Felicia. Another really fun uh, role-playing game in a box is Arkham Horror. In Arkham Horror, the players are a group of uh, Victorian era investigators attempting to seal gates and prevent one of the great old ones from coming through into our world and devouring everything. One of the things that I love about Arkham Horror is uh, it's enormous. I mean, it takes up this entire table that I'm sitting at, and uh, you're going to play for roughly three to four hours, and you're probably going to lose the game. And it's not that big a deal. One of the things that these long playing big box games brings up for a lot of people is, well, look, if we're going to play a game that takes three or four hours, why don't we just play a role playing game? And to that I say, nah, you're probably right. But Role-playing game in a box. There's another cooperative, competitive, role-playing game in a box style game that I love from the 80s called The Fury of Dracula. This game was originally published by, I think, Games Workshop, and then it went out of print, but it recently came back into print, although it's really hard to find. And in this game, one player is Dracula, and you're moving around in secret trying to uh, kill and maim and destroy and do sexy vampire sexy things, while the other players are all the investigators trying to find you and track you down and stop you and kill you and prevent you from doing sexy vampire things. I just have a question for all of you vampire investigators out there. What do you have against vampire sexy things? Why are you trying so hard to stop vampires from being sexy? Have you ever seen True Blood? 
Do you know that True Blood is the best way to get a person who likes vampires to do sexy vampire things with you? You're welcome. A couple of quick honorable mentions in the role-playing game in a box. Castle Ravenloft, which is the boxed board game version of the classic gothic horror AD&D setting from 1990. Mansions of Madness, which is a Cthulhu-themed role-playing game in a box. A Touch of Evil, which is published by Flying Frog Productions, the same guys that gave us Last Night on Earth and Fortune and Glory. It's a very fun game. It's another one of those games that can be played cooperatively or competitively and really captures some of the great uh, horror movie tropes that we can all identify with and that we all enjoy. God, this cut is awful. I made butternut squash soup last night, and part of making the butternut squash soup was to peel the butternut squash, which is a lot easier to do than peeling a pumpkin, as it turns out. But in true horror movie fashion, I was peeling the, the stuff, and I cut the shit out of my thumb. I mean, and it's like, it's a little cut. Like, that tiny little cut shouldn't hurt as much as it does. And I know what you're saying to yourselves, well, Wheaton, why don't you have a Band-Aid on that? Well, I'll tell you why. Because I only have regular Band-Aids, and those are stupid and boring. And if I'm going to wear a Band-Aid, it's going to be probably a Batman Band-Aid, or at least a Hello Kitty Band-Aid, and we ran out. Let's move on to role-playing games. We love role-playing games because they give us an opportunity Thank you, that has been Will Lip Sync's His Barking Dog's Theater. Do you want to come be on Not The Flog? No. No Ann Wheaton on Not The Flog for you. Quite honestly, if you had just loved a little more, wished a little harder, she probably would have come on the show. Then there was that time that my wife locked our bedroom door with no one inside of it. That's gonna be a problem. We are 100% professional here on Not The Flog. We uh, do not just throw up a bunch of stuff in my dining room in my house. This is an actual uh, studio with a, a large professional crew. And also we have complete control of everything that uh, would affect the environment. Spared no expense for you, Not The Flog viewers. You know why? Because I love you. Hey, what were we talking about? Oh, right, role-playing games. The very best horror role-playing game supplement I have ever read in my life is GURPS Horror. This isn't so much a collection of settings and rules as it is a... Buffering. It's basically a collection of suggestions on how to bring a classic horror feeling to any role-playing game you play, from Dungeons & Dragons to D20 Modern to Pathfinder to any of the indie RPGs. There's an original edition, which is a, a soft cover, and that was published in the 80s, and that's the one that I grew up with. It's cool, it's got sort of a skeleton holding a knife on the cover of it. But the new book that came out for GURPS 4th edition is uh, the size and stature of a proper source book, and I absolutely love it. Even if you do not intend to play in the GURPS system, if you are interested in horror role-playing, in Savage Worlds, in Fate Core, in D&D, you really should pick this book up because it is incredibly useful. I asked the readers of my blog at willwheaton.net if they had suggestions about games to include in this episode of Not the Flog. And Jason said that his favorite horror RPG is called Dread. Dread is an indie RPG that has a very unique circumstance to it. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense at all. Let's just back that up and see where the whole thing fell apart. Very unique circumstance to it. There, exactly there. That is where it, that was where my brain went. <laughs> you're on your own, buddy. You don't know what you're talking about and neither do I. You should have eaten breakfast. Dread is a horror role-playing game with probably the most unique 
skill test system ever devised. So in a horror game, you want to create that sense of dread, right? You want your players to be terrified to open that door. You want them to be running away from that thing. You want that they're so worried about getting that car to start. You want that adrenaline and that fear and that tension. Dread accomplishes this by using a Jenga tower for skill tests. So every time you need to make a skill test, you pull a piece out of the Jenga tower. And then as you get further into the adventure, that tower becomes much more precarious and much more likely to fall. And when that tower falls, your character dies. So everyone gets really invested in the story and you create that physiological reaction that your character is experiencing. Um, it is probably a game, a game called Dread. Yeah, that's how I would describe it. Hey, Will Wheaton, some of you are saying, are there any card-based games that are appropriate for Halloween? I sure am glad you asked, person I just made up so I can have this dialogue with you. There are. My favorite Halloween-themed card game is called Spooks. It is unfortunately out of print right now, but maybe this will make it popular enough that it will come back into print. It was published by Steve Jackson Games a number of years ago. And it's a trick-taking game where you're trying to run out of a haunted house. The thing is, you don't have to be the first one out of the haunted house. You just have to be faster than the last person out of the haunted house. The artwork on this game is absolutely beautiful. The spiders in this game are so creepy that for a person who doesn't like spiders, like me, uh, I kind of don't want to hold those those spider cards in my hand because they're gross and who knows the artwork might come to life it's Halloween weird shit goes on you guys but this game is really super fun I imagine that you can find it used and maybe Steve Jackson will put it back into print if we all ask him nicely enough hi Steve Jackson I sure would like it if you would put spooks back into print hello I'm the horseman I would love it if you would put, if you would put spooks back into print I am a Dalek you should put spooks back into print Cthulhu Kitty, and I would like you to put spooks back into your brain so I do not have to devour the world. I'm Batman. Hey, everybody, I'm that thing from the Twilight Zone. I got to work with William Shatner, and I told spooky, terrifying secrets about the future. And here's my spooky, terrifying secret about the future. Steve Jackson Games should put spooks back into print. What else do I have here that I can make talk? I am a wrench. Normally, wrenches cannot talk, but I am so committed to spooks being placed back into print that I have decided that I will talk now. Anything else to say, wrench? No. My tongue. Bit my tongue. Give you people gold, and all I get back is eye rolls and groans. You know what I never got in high school was eye rolls and groans, or a hand job. Moving on! I asked on my blog about card games and Nicole said these were her favorite Halloween themed games. Now I have to read this off because it's a rather long list, okay? Here we go. Munchkin Bites, Munchkin Nomicon, Munchkin Tricky Treats, Munchkin Apocalypse, Zombie Munchkin, and The Last Night on Earth. One of these things is not like the other. Hey everybody, look who dropped by. It's my cat Luna. Let's put her on the table and see how she decides to f with us. What are you gonna do, babe? Hi. We are super professional here. We're super professional and we're super efficient. I have cat hair in my mouth. So that just about wraps it up for some of the Halloween themed tabletop games that I like to play at Halloween and other times of the year. Like Ministry once said, I wish every day was like Halloween. Bop, um, bop, um, bop, bop. Bop, um, bop, um, bop, bop. So let's do something a little different on today's Not The Flog, shall we? Normally we just focus on tabletop games, but let's talk about some video games, some really scary video games. I'm talking shit your pants in the middle of the afternoon and then sit there in your own shit because you don't want to get up because maybe the game's going to come to life, okay? Let's go. Let's go all the way back to the first 
video game I played that genuinely scared the shit out of me. Silent Hill 3. That is the first game that I uh, played in the dark with my headphones on. I will never hear the static of a radio again without being terrified. Thanks, Silent Hill 3. Are you familiar with the Slender Man mythos? I don't know why I'm waiting for you to answer. It's not like I can hear you. <laughs> Slender Man is one of the first modern myths that I've ever heard of, and it's genuinely scary. There's a couple of web series. My favorite of all of them is Marble Hornets that kind of creates what would happen if Slender Man were real. And some guys got together and they made a game called Slender. It is a free open source game. It runs on Mac and Windows. Unfortunately, Amiga is not supported. I would encourage you to Google Slender Man, maybe start at Wikipedia and then just go down that rabbit hole. But be prepared, it's deep and it takes days to uh, climb back out of. Finally, the absolute hands down pants shittiest, scary, terrifying video game of all time in this timeline, in several alternate timelines, now in the past, in the future, Amnesia the Dark Descent. It is one of the most viscerally terrifying games I have ever played. I tried to play it in the middle of the afternoon so that I wouldn't be afraid to walk through the dark house. And uh, this is me in the middle of the afternoon. It's ah! pretty much how that game plays. It's really fun. It's available through Steam. You can also buy it directly from the publisher. There's a sequel out called Amnesia, something about pigs. I can't remember what it is. Amnesia has a fantastic soundtrack that you can buy. And uh, if you want to really have a really good time, play the game all the way through. It's not, it doesn't take that long. Uh, it's like seven or eight hours. And then go to YouTube and watch videos of people playing Amnesia. It is absolutely hilarious to watch other people uh, get as terrified as you just recently were. We're gonna end today with some horror movie recommendations from me to you. These are, well, they're horror movies. It's pretty self-explanatory. Ready? Here we go. Creep Show, Evil Dead 2, Event Horizon, The Original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Game Change. Game Change is about how uh, John McCain chose Sarah Palin to be his running mate in the election. I made a movie about it called Game Change. Hi, I'm Will Wheaton, and this is my think about what I just said face. And finally, probably the most perfect horror movie ever made, Joss Whedon's Cabin in the Woods. What's your favorite horror movie? As long as it's not one of those goddamn paranormal activity fucking things, tell me in the comments. Ooh, you know what else is really good? The Ring. That's a scary movie. That is legitimately straight up scary. An Inconvenient Truth is scary. Hey, thanks a lot for watching this episode of Not The Flog. And until I see you next time, keep your hand out of your pants, it's weird.